Talk to political correspondent Peter Spencer, who joins us now. Heck, Peter, what an awful lot of total chaos. You could put it like that. I mean, I have to say that Rishi Sunak is in the mother of all pincer movements with his party, particularly over Rwanda. And it calls to mind, to my mind at least, the plight of the ancient Greek hero Odysseus when he was confronted with a man-eating monster that threatened to eat half his crew or a whirlpool which would sink his ship. Now, it is to be noted that he did finally make it back to Ithaca, but when he did, he was on his tod. Rishi Sunak's situation, it, it, impossible to overstate the situation, the difficulty that Rishi Sunak is in because there is something like a hundred of his, of his own backbench MPs who are really, really concerned about the, the, the Rwanda deal and the potential for it um, breaking human rights laws. Basically, it, in their view, it goes much too far. At the same time, there's something like the same number on the right of the party who say it doesn't go far enough. Now, come Tuesday, there will be the second reading or it's scheduled the second reading of the emergency legislation supposed to fix it all. And the normal deal is that that you don't actually get a, a government defeat at second reading stage. It comes later when you chip away at the edges. However, it only would only take 29 Tory MPs to actually vote against this legislation for it to fall. Now, when you've got these disparate elements all over the place, it is within the bounds of possibility that he will face a government defeat, in which case the whole thing goes up in smoke. It's so difficult to know what way he's going to go. At the moment, he is stubbornly, stubbornly still trying to make a success of the Rwanda scheme. And uh, nobody really knows. He doesn't even know, does he, whether it, it, what he's doing at the moment will uh, succeed. So, I mean, you said he's in the mother of all pincer movements. He can't fend off both at the same time and survive, can he? That is his problem. I mean, I would suggest that over the weekend, telephone lines from from the, the number 10 and its outriders are red hot as phone calls are being made, more or less pleading with backbenchers, say, look, give us a break, guys, and we can sort this a little bit further down the line, some of which will, might actually resonate and some of which will fall on completely deaf ears. I mean, he's, I mean, it's sort of, you know, remember that, that Brexit cost David Cameron his job and Theresa May, and um, uh, Boris Johnson got through by saying, we'll get it done, we've got an oven-ready deal. Well, he can't, Rishi Sunak can't even promise that when you consider the fact that the government's own top legal eagle has said, look, the chances of actually flights taking off to Rwanda this side of the election are 50-50 at best, which, which to me means he doesn't think it's going it, to... They don't think it's actually going to happen. OK. Peter, for now, thanks very much indeed. It